Welcome to Using the Inverse Tangent by Conceptual Calculus. In this video, we learn how to use the inverse tangent function to find angles. Some examples have a twist that we need to watch for. Consider the angle in this sketch. The terminal side of the angle passes through the point where x is 3 and y is 2. We will use this point to calculate the angle. First, we estimate the angle from the sketch. This angle looks like it is about a third of the way from the x-axis to the y-axis, so it should be about a third of 90 degrees. This makes the angle about 30 degrees. Now, we use the inverse tangent function to calculate the angle. Remember the tangent is y over x, so the tangent of this angle is 2 over 3. This makes our angle the inverse tangent of 2 thirds. When using a calculator to find this value, make sure you have it in the correct mode for the angle measure you want, whether degrees or radians. I am using degrees. The inverse tangent of 2 thirds is 33.7 degrees. This agrees with our estimate, so it is probably correct. In the next example, the vector is below the x-axis, so the y-coordinate is negative. The angle is about 2 thirds of the way from the x-axis to the negative end of the y-axis, so I'm estimating it at about negative 60 degrees. That measure is negative because the angle goes clockwise from the x-axis. A positive angle goes counterclockwise. The calculation works just like in the previous example. The angle is the inverse tangent of y over x, which is the inverse tangent of negative 2 over 1. This gives us an angle of negative 63.4 degrees, which agrees with the estimate. Now we consider an angle in the second quadrant where x is negative and y is positive. This angle is just a bit more than halfway from the y-axis to the negative end of the x-axis, so a bit more than 45 degrees past 90 degrees. I'm estimating it as a bit more than 135 degrees. Next, we calculate it. The inverse tangent of y over x is the inverse tangent of 3 over negative 4, which gives us an angle of Negative 36.9 degrees? That's not even close to the estimate. What went wrong? To understand this, we look carefully at the inverse tangent function. In a previous video, we learned a process for finding an inverse function. First, we need the original function to pass the horizontal line test so that it is one-to-one. -one. This means any horizontal line we draw should cross the function in at most one place. This horizontal line crosses the tangent function in three places just on this graph, and this graph does not even show all of the tangent function. The tangent function clearly does not pass the horizontal line test, which means it is not one-to-one. -to, -one. to solve this problem, we restrict the domain. We use only one branch of the tangent function. If we restrict the domain of the tangent function to just the interval between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, then we get a one-to-one -one function. We can draw horizontal lines wherever we like, and each line crosses the restricted function only once. The range of this function is negative infinity to positive infinity, which is the same range that the tangent function has when it is not restricted. Now that we have a one-to-one -one function, we can go on to find the inverse function. The tangent function has vertical asymptotes at x equals negative pi over 2 and x equals positive pi over 2. The inverse comes from switching the roles of x and y, so it will have asymptotes at y equals positive pi over 2 and y equals negative pi over 2. This prepares us to draw the inverse tangent function. Notice that it has a domain of negative infinity to positive infinity and a range of negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. As we recall from our study of inverse functions, the domain of the inverse function is always the same as the range of the original function and the range of the inverse is the domain of the original. This means when we restricted the domain of tangent to get a one-to-one -one function, we caused the range of the inverse function to be negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. This range is the key to why the first two examples we did earlier worked and the third one did not. Look at this range on the unit circle. The range is from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 in radians, or in degrees, from negative 90 degrees to positive 90 degrees. This gives the right side of the unit circle. Remember, the range is the set of values we can get out of the function. 
the inverse tangent function can give us values on the right side of the circle only, not the left side. That explains our results in the three examples we did earlier. The first two involved angles on the right side of the graph, so the inverse tangent gave us the angles we wanted. The third example involved an angle on the left side of the graph. The inverse tangent function cannot give us that angle, so it didn't. Let's look back at the graph of the inverse tangent function. The range of the inverse tangent function corresponds to the right side of the unit circle, from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. That branch is blue in the sketch. It is the one that gave us the inverse tangent function, shown in red. The left side of the unit circle, from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, is not in the range of the inverse tangent because it was not in the restricted domain that we used to make the tangent function one to one. The branch of tangent that corresponds to the left side of the circle, from x equals pi over 2 to x equals 3 pi over 2, was left out of our restricted domain. It is green in this sketch. Notice that this missing branch has the same shape as the branch we used, but has shifted pi units to the right. Every point in the missing branch corresponds to a point in the branch that we used, shifted pi radians, or 180 degrees, to the right. That gives us a method of bringing back the missing branch. When we need an angle from the left side of the unit circle, we can get it by adding pi radians, or 180 degrees, to the angle that we get from the inverse tangent function. Now we go back to the example that didn't come out right. The inverse tangent of 3 over negative 4 gave us negative 36.9 degrees. That's down here in red. If we add 180 degrees to that, shown in purple, then we get the angle theta. It is negative 36.9 degrees plus 180 degrees, so theta is 143.1 degrees, which agrees with our estimate. Consider one last example involving a straight line through the origin. One end of the line gives us an angle on the right side of the circle. I'm calling that angle alpha. The other end of the line gives us an angle on the left side, which I'm calling beta. I'm estimating angle alpha at about 30 degrees. To calculate it, we find a point on the terminal side, 5, 3, and use the inverse tangent. The inverse tangent of y over x is the inverse tangent of 3 over 5, which is the inverse tangent of 0 0.6. This gives us an angle of 31 degrees, which agrees with the estimate. Now for the angle beta. It appears to be about 30 degrees more than 180 degrees, so I'm estimating it at 210 degrees. The terminal side of beta passes through the point negative 5, negative 3. So we use the inverse tangent of negative 3 over negative 5. The negatives cancel, so we get the inverse tangent of 0 0.6. That's the same thing we had last time. So we get the same result, 31 degrees, which was correct for the angle alpha. Because beta is on the left side of the circle, we knew the inverse tangent could not give us the correct measure for angle beta. We can get beta by adding 180 degrees to the angle alpha. This makes beta 31 degrees plus 180 degrees, so beta is 211 degrees, which agrees with our estimate. Even a very rough sketch can tell you whether you need to add 180 degrees, or pi radians if you are using radians, to get the desired angle. Without a sketch, you can get that information from looking at the sign of the x-coordinate. If the x-coordinate is negative, then your angle is on the left side of the unit circle. So you need to add a half circle, either 180 degrees or pi radians, to the angle that you got from the inverse tangent function. Thank you for watching Using the Inverse Tangent by Conceptual Calculus. Check our channel for more helpful math videos.